Hello, I'm Dr. Karen with Embrace Life Ohm and Mother Corps, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the real cause of the skin cancer epidemic. This is part of a continuing series on light and your health, and in order to better understand today's video, we highly recommend that you watch part three in our series, The Hidden Hazards of Energy Efficient Light Bulbs. There are three main types of skin cancer squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. Of these three, basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas are very common, but usually limited to the skin and are rarely fatal. Malignant melanoma is often limited to the skin as well, but can be invasive and is the leading cause of skin cancer related deaths. All types of skin cancer have increased in number dramatically over the last 80 years. For example, with malignant melanoma, between 1950 and 2007, the incidence in women increased by a factor of 9, and the incidence in men increased by a factor of 17. To avoid being caught up in this skin cancer epidemic, we're often given the advice to avoid exposure to the sun. But the data shows that the only cancer which can be related to cumulative sun exposure is squamous cell carcinoma while the incidence of basal cell and malignant melanoma actually decreases with cumulative sun exposure. So yes, getting a lot of sun exposure throughout your lifetime is correlated with a decreased risk of malignant melanoma. It is also correlated with a decreased risk of many other cancers. For example, getting a lot of sun is associated with the whopping 80 to 90% decrease in breast and colon cancer mortality. So for every one cancer death from squamous cell carcinoma that might be averted by avoiding the sun, there are at least 30 deaths that could be averted by engaging in regular moderate sunning. Not only that, but the sunblock lotion that we're repeatedly urged to use to avoid cancer may avoid squamous cell carcinoma, but may actually increase your risk from malignant melanoma and other cancers. In order to understand what I just told you about skin cancer, we need to understand the very different effects of different frequencies of light on the skin. So the different frequencies that are important in this story are the three ultraviolet or UV frequencies, which in order of increasing energy are UVA, UVB, and UVC, the visible frequencies, violet, blue, and red, and the frequency which is below the visible range, infrared. Now UVA, violet, and blue light are each important for your health in different ways. However, for reasons that are too complicated to explain here, the net effect of exposure to these light frequencies is increased oxidative stress in your cells. And malignant melanoma is a cancer whose growth is encouraged by increased oxidative stress. Now the original sunblocks only blocked UVB light. This would protect you against sunburn. However, it would also prevent you from getting the antioxidative benefits of UVB exposure. So you would stay in the sun longer, feeling that you were protected, meanwhile receiving heavy oxidative stress from all the UVA, blue, and violet light that was not being blocked. Today's sunblocks tend to protect against UVA as well as UVB, but you're still blocking your benefits from the UVB while still receiving oxidative stress from the unbalanced blue and violet light. So the widespread use of sunblock lotions explains some of the increase in skin cancer, but it probably explains less than 5 to 10% of the increase. Tanning beds are a serious problem because they give you a high dose of the oxidative UVA radiation while not giving you the protective UVB. But there are many people getting skin cancer who have never used a tanning salon. The increased solar radiation from the depletion of the ozone layer likewise does not explain the vastness of the increase in skin cancer. Some of the other increase in skin cancers can be related to chemical exposure, such as herbicides and pesticides to taking medications which photosensitize the skin, and to the increase in systemic diseases that cause oxidative stress, such as irritable bowel disease and type 2 diabetes. However, there are still a lot of skin cancers that remain unexplained. 
it was long recognized that the skin cancer epidemic was basically occurring only among those who work indoors. And it was hypothesized that indoor workers would get more severe sunburns when they went out on vacation. And indeed, the number of sunburns is correlated with the increased risk of malignant melanoma. However, it was later shown that this is a correlation and not a causation. People who have skin types that predispose them to sunburn also have skins which are less resistant to oxidative stress. So while people with more sunburns do get more melanoma, it is not necessarily a causative relationship. Peral et al. 1982 explored the hypothesis that it wasn't something outside that was causing the melanoma in the indoor workers, but something inside. They looked at workplaces with fluorescent lighting installed and found that women in those workplaces had double the risk of getting malignant melanoma and men had quadrupled the risk. Future studies have supported the hypothesis that it is actually fluorescent light bulbs that is the main cause of the skin cancer epidemic. The reason why fluorescent light bulbs cause skin cancer and other skin disorders is the nature of the light spectra produced. Unlike the full broad spectrum light spectra produced by the sun, the light coming out of a fluorescent bulb is very concentrated in narrow wavelengths. Some of these light concentrations occur in the range of UVC, UVA, and visible violet light. The exact wavelengths of UVA and violet light at which the fluorescent light bulbs have a strong peak have been shown to be the same wavelengths that are extremely carcinogenic in laboratory animals. In addition to having this very concentrated light in the wavelengths that are dangerous to human cells, the fluorescent light is lacking the UVB and more importantly, the infrared light, which is strongly antioxidative. So taken as a whole, the fluorescent light creates a lot of oxidative stress on skin cells while not giving them the light they need to relieve that stress. Now, to be fair, the light bulb is coated with materials to try to block the escape of the UV rays, but experiments have shown that the UV rays are not completely blocked and that a significant amount of them do escape. And there is no attempt to block the escape of the violet light. Temporal data strongly supports the fluorescent lighting hypothesis. Fluorescent lights were first introduced for commercial use in 1939, and skin cancer rates began increasing in 1940. During the 1940s, most of the fluorescent lights were used in, the, in factories in the defense industry, which at the time had a large number of women workers. And by 1950, most of the melanoma cases were in women, a trend which later significantly reversed. And then there's the birth cohort observation. For people born before World War II, the year of birth is a powerful independent predictor of whether they will get malignant melanoma, with earlier birth years corresponding to a lower chance of contracting the disease. After 1950, the year of birth makes much less difference in total risk. We can understand this by noting that before 1940, there was no widespread use of fluorescent lighting. So someone born in 1935, for example, would have a whole five years of their life with no fluorescent lighting exposure, whereas someone born in 1930 would have a full 10 years of their life with no exposure to fluorescent lights. So the more years of your life that you have no fluorescent lighting, the lower your lifetime risk of contracting malignant melanoma. On the other hand, if you're born after 1950, you have no years of not experiencing fluorescent lighting, and you'll probably have experienced a lot of fluorescent lighting in your classroom. So everyone born after 1950 has a more uniform but elevated risk. So what to do if you want to decrease your risk of skin cancer? Number one, get into the sun. The sunlight will give you vitamin D and will also reduce your total oxidative stress. But that is if you get all of the sunlight. If you don't get the UVB, the effect will not be sufficiently powerful. So get rid of the sunscreen. When you've reached the point where you're going to burn, cover up with a shirt and hat and get in the shade. Number two, remove fluorescent lights and high color LED lights from your home and workplace. High color LED lights have a lot of blue light and since blue light is oxidative, those lights are also likely to cause skin cancer. 
To find out what light bulbs to replace with, please watch part two, light bulbs, in this series. If you're working indoors, use as much direct solar light as you can. And also, if you can, open the windows because the glass pane will block the UVB that, again, you need to balance the UVA, violet, and blue lights. If you can't avoid exposure to fluorescent or high color temperature LED lights, or if you've already had a lot of such exposure in your life, then you might consider adding a little bit of UVB light lamp therapy and also adding infrared light therapy. You could do this every day that you're being exposed to the fluorescent lighting. We're gonna be doing a couple of more shows on cancer, but after that, we'll do a series of shows dedicated to using infrared therapy. Thank you so much for watching today.